There's one point when Victor is trying to tell Elaine that I made Simone, and she just says, Victor, she made you. And that's, that's directly out of the Course of Miracles. What you made seemed to make you. That's the, that's the whole reversal of cause and effect. Inventing a world, making an ego, and inventing a world, and then thinking that the world that was invented made you. That's the story, mom and dad. The whole story is based on that reversal of cause and effect. That what you made, made you. So that's, this is getting right at the base of the ego. You seem to set it in motion and then it just turns around and it, it makes you, and you feel like a victim of it, of a world. You hear teenagers say, I didn't ask to be born in this world, why did you bring me here? You know, it's, that's another version of victim of the world. And it just goes on and on and on and on until you start to, to reclaim the power of the mind with these workbook lessons from A Course in Miracles. I have invented the world I see. I am not the victim of the world I see. You see the mind training? Flipping it all back around. Everything that you don't like about the world, the ego put there. And then it threw it back as if you're just like a human being who's being done to. Who's, you have a hostile world. Maybe you were mistreated, the ego says, as parents. Parents mistreating you. Friends, family, neighbors. Were you abused? Hmm. Who was it that did the abusing? Who threw it out there in the first place? Who thought up the idea of abuse? You know, you invent an ego and then it throws out a world that seems like you're just a character, a little puppet, a little feather dancing in the wind at the mercy of a world of giant world outside. So this is a great movie showing the whole dynamics underneath the construct. You made it, and it made you. And at one point, you know, when he's trying to, he gets start to get angry at the construct, you know, he says, you know, I, you made me, I made you first, you know. It's like, I got you first and I'm going to get you back. <laughs> I'm going to pull the plug on you, but but in the end, this was an also a good symbol that you can't kill the ego. As much as you must, might hate what it seems to be and what, what it made, if you try to kill it, you will feel like it's indestructible because you can't, you can't, you can't kill what was set in motion. You can only expose the underpinnings underneath it and then it will disappear, it will dissolve away, but as much as People sometimes say, oh, I'm going to get back at that ego for doing this to me. You know, it's like, come on, just keep coming at me. You know, once it likes a fight, try to kill me, it says, you know, that gives me more strength. You try to kill me, so. So this, this movie really, really gets at those dynamics. But once you see it, you, you can never take this personality self so seriously. <laughs> Because it seems to have a life of its own, and it seems to have, have gone on and developed all this drama and all this uh, reality. But it doesn't have any. It never had any reality. Just a ghost. Any impressions or feelings from that movie? I thought the daughter was really interesting. Yeah. Because daughter was like, you know, she was like, you know, she was always questioning it, and in the end she was sort of the one that I think would be like the Holy Spirit, kind of like worked with the ego to kind of save the dad, you know. Yeah, I think she had the, the key pivotal 
line in the movie, because when people say, I, I just can't grasp this forgiveness thing, how, how does Jesus or how does the Holy Spirit view this world? And the great line that I quote over and over and over and over from this movie is, when, they get, when he gets back in the limousine and, and you know, he says, what do you think, Lainey, about what I did with Simone? And she says the famous line, we're fine with fake dead, <laughs> just don't lie about it. Now that's the Holy Spirit. In other words, whatever the ego seemed to make, whatever it seemed to do, it's like Jesus and the Holy Spirit are like saying to your mind, we're fine with fake, just don't lie about it. Just don't continue on. Now that I've told you it's an illusion, now that I've shown you that it's an illusion, now that I've taken my time to explain very carefully in 31 chapters, you know, how this whole charade works, and it's a total figment of imagination that has no basis in reality. There's a blessing I have to give you. We're fine with fake. Just don't lie about it. In other words, the Holy Spirit and, the, and the Jesus are not like, upset with the ego, or angry with the ego, or angry with the mind that believes in the ego, or, or upset with the mind that's dreaming. Uh, today I was doing a one-on-one -on -one with Malfrey's son, and he kept saying, I just feel like I should be holy. I feel like I should be able to get this. I should, I really feel like I want this, and I want to just be with God, that's all I want, is to be with God, and it's like these, these nagging thoughts, these nagging feelings, these repeating patterns, you know, it's like I can't stand it, this is not my life, this is not the way it's supposed to be. And, and he was saying, maybe I'm just really hard on myself, but I just feel really bad, like I screwed up somewhere, like I messed up. Like, how could I possibly have messed it up so bad, when it was there for me so perfect? How could I have messed this up? And it's like, this is where you got to remember the line of Laney in there. We're fine with fake, just don't lie about it. This is why we say, no private thoughts. First of all, it's a fact, like Paul was sharing last night, that there really, literally are no private thoughts. But, it's not like, they're, they're wrong, or they're evil, or they're bad, or anything of the sort. You know, we're fine with fake, just don't lie about it. We're fine with private thoughts that you believe in. Just don't cover them. Just don't justify them. Just don't try to fool yourself into thinking that they're real. And make up stories, you know. If you've got thoughts that involve anger, or pain, or hatred, fear, guilt, jealousy, anything that's going on in there, they're just thoughts. And we're fine with fake, they're just fake thoughts, we're fine with that, but just don't lie about it. Don't lie about it to yourself. Don't believe in them. Don't take them so seriously, because you're going to feel guilty if you buy the bait and you take these thoughts seriously. They're not your real thoughts. That's what he's saying in the, in the workbook. You have real thoughts. Thoughts that you think with God, and that's your innocence, that's your joy, that's your release, that's your happiness. And then you have these private thoughts which really have no validity, no reality at all. And the reason you don't need to feel guilty about these thoughts is because they're not real. God didn't create them. God didn't create attack thoughts. God didn't create comparisons, judgments, you know, all the things we've, we've been talking about that we've been letting surface during these four weeks. God didn't create any of those. They didn't come from God, so they don't really have a real source and they don't have a reality. 